me go ahead and move on with our next deck. Uh, we're going to do responsibility code script. So I'm going to use my same actions here, send my account over, commit the button. And here's uh, one of the best options to, you know, pay attention to the details of how your application works. You know, because obviously you were, everybody's trained on, okay, to change the responsibility code, you click the box, you click the second box, and then you find the guy here. However you do it, uh, either you just scroll down through the list, And you know some some setups are a little bit differently. So in this version of Navigator, um, I like to snap back on me. So I, like when I'm going into your system, I just have to pay attention to exactly what's happening. So okay, when I click this box, what else changes on the screen? You know, how am I going to build a script to go click the box? And then click this box and then pick something out of the table because if you notice I don't do anything this box is going to automatically go away. It's hard to type in it. Once you click something it, the box snaps back into display mode. So this is really when the intricate details of your application come into play when you're building a script to it. And I'm sure many of you out there can vouch for once you've build Foxtrot scripts, you learn your system a lot better. So with this particular responsibility code box, I always recommend to do that there's a couple of different steps uh, you can do. One is if you know that your script um, may pull up an account, that sometimes the box is in this mode, which I call display mode because it's displaying the name and the code. And sometimes it'll be in this type of position where maybe it says none. So what I want to do is build that scenario into my script. Because again, we want to build a script that's bulletproof where it's going to run through all my accounts no matter what it encounters. So at least it'll log it if there was an error or handle it if it's, if it's scriptable. So generally it will come in like this. So what I'll do is I can put an if statement by targeting this display mode box and use the if the target is found. So it's going to look for not only just Aaron, but it could also look for that particular box in general um, because again we're not using the require matching caption at this point we just want to look for that box and you can look to see here's our list of new table parentage options at this point we really don't have to dig into that we just want to say if this target is found I want you to send a click to it. You just do a basic click, bypass the mouse, and execute. So what that click is going to do is change the form of that box from display mode into an edit position. And now it can jump outside of that if statement because no matter what what form it was in, now it's going to be in editable mode, either if it was in display mode or if it had none there. So now I can just build my script to go in and handle or, or update the code. This is where a little bit of creative scripting comes into play. Um, it's not as straightforward as just clicking a box and selecting the name. So what we've had to do here is use the send data 
and we're going to send the keystrokes needed to select that particular name. And one key uh, action that's helped me out and support over the years is using a space bar to act like a click in the send data. So that space bar is going to have a, it's going to open up our box and then it's going to, we want to put our new guy in here. So for this one we'll just select the same guy each time. Of course, if you're using a spreadsheet to change it from each, um, you know, maybe a different responsibility code for account, you know, you would just access your spreadsheet by going into your expression builder and then your data. But we're going to select Otis. So for this to behave correctly, uh, we do not want to override anything in this action. Since we're just saying keystrokes, we're going to select this to none. And I want to slow it down because I want each individual keystroke to be recorded. And uh, of course this is always a good time to notate when you've done something like this. When I click OK, it's going to go through and click the box like a space and then type in Otis. Okay. So that may, it may not be typical for every Navigator user, but I want you to have an idea of some, some creative techniques like that that you may have to use. Um, you know, we're constantly enhancing our technology to better handle, um, you know, the, any scenario that you'll run in ITI, but we've covered most of them for now. So again, our if statement to look to see if the box is in display mode. If it is, we'll click it, and then we'll send data to it to select our correct responsibility person, person that's responsible. And after that point, you would be uh, going into uh, clicking the update button to save your changes.